A very good day to all the participants and welcome to this online program on um, power generation, transmission and distribution uh, organized by National Power Training Institute Durgapur. Today we are going to discuss about different types of dust collecting equipment and their selection, how they are utilized to follow the environmental pollution control norms and how to minimize the uh, suspended particulate matter emission as well as to arrest the uh, polluting gases from the flue gas stream. For selecting the dust collecting equipment, we need some prior information so that uh, appropriate equipment can be installed for the purpose of emission control. First of all, we have to understand the quantity of gas to be treated and its variation with time in the flow passage, nature and concentration of the particulate matter to be removed, temperature and pressure of the gas stream which is coming out of the boiler, nature of the gas phase for solubility and corrosive effect and their dew points, desired quality of removal of particular uh, matter required, how much efficiently it has to be removed. There are different kinds of dust collecting equipment which are in installed depending upon the particulate matter size, their collection uh, percentage of collection required and how much emission can be allowed and there are uh, gravity settling chambers, inertial collection which may be centrifugal type or uh, scrubbers. We are also having uh, electrostatic precipitators, fabric filters. So all this can be employed depending upon the collection efficiency, economic con criteria to select, select the uh, equipment as well as how much pressure drop is allowed across the flow passage. The prime objectives of uh, dust control equipments are definitely Elimination of health hazards to the plant personnel as well as to our, uh, other public. Prevention of physical damage to the properties which are running smoothly for performance. Recovery of valuable waste products from the exiting flue gas. Minimizing the economic losses uh, that is created by the uncontrolled emission. Improvement of product quality in terms of better control of the system. The common type of collection equipments which are used for separating dust from the uh, exhaust gas, they are uh, basically settling chambers, inertial separators other than cyclones, then cyclones, filters, electrostatic precipitators and scrubbers or wet collectors. The efficiency of the dust control equipment is measured by the quantity of particulate matters that is collected from the dust cloud and gas while flowing through the equipment with respect to the quantity of particulates initially present in the gas which is entering into the control device. Settling chambers are provided to settle down the dust particles in a flowing gas uh, by sudden change in volumetric flow with respect to uh, dust laden gas by change in volume there is a change in velocity and that creates the separation of dust from the uh, flowing gas. The gas velocity must be sufficiently low while it is flowing through the settling chamber. Below 3 meter per second is uh, necessary for prevention of re-entrainment of the settled particle and less than 0.5 meter per second is preferred. Differential pressure across the chamber is usually small. The minimum particle size which can be removed uh, with this arrangement is generally around 10 micron size. Separating chambers are preferable when the percentage of uh, higher uh, size particulate matters are more in the dust land and gas and they are having low cost, simple construction, low maintenance 
and low pressure drop across the flow passage and there is a dry and continuous disposal of the solid particulates. It can be constructed out of almost any material either steel or iron or other supplementary material and uh, there may be temperature and pressure limitations that has to be taken care of during construction particularly space is a matter that has to be taken care of with the only disadvantages of large space requirement and high uh, larger size particulate collection efficiency uh, this type of uh, settling chambers are useful main applications are industrial applications and they are mostly used in rotary cleans with uh, natural draft furnaces and sometimes we find they are used in food and metallurgical industries as a first stage dust control mechanism. The inertial separators are typical dust control equipment which includes the collectors that utilizes the greater inertial force available with the dispersing particulate matters uh, that affects the separation of particulate and gas. There are two types of equipment, inertial or impact type uh, separators and cyclone separators. In case of uh, impact type separators, they employ the incremental changes of direction of the flue gas or carrier gas stream, dust lens gas to exert a greater inertial effect to the dispersed solid particulate thereby by impact with the flow passage they are getting separated. Cyclonic separators are uh, prepared with a cyclone where there is a continuous change of flow passage in an annular flow passage and naturally as a means of uh, centrifugal force generated in the flow passage the exerting that exerting a greater inertial effect to the dispersed particulate matter thereby separating the particulate matter at the bottom from the dust laden gas and uh, the clean gas is moving out of the cyclonic chamber from the top. There are three fundamental type of inertial or impact separator. First one is baffle type separators. In this type of arrangement there are baffle plates they are placed in the flow passage in a zigzag pattern in a staggered way so that when the gas stream moves across these baffle plates uh, they are getting continuously diverted in the direction of flow and as a result the gas particles which are imp impacting with the baffle plates they are getting separated due to loss of inertia and they are collected at the bottom of the chamber. The baffle plate dust separating system is suitable for particles larger than 20 micron size in diameter. Baffle chamber efficiency is a function of four variables. The number of baffle plates employed in the flue duct passage and length of the uh, baffle uh, plated zone, the duct length, spacing of the baffles and configuration of the baffles in terms of their direction. These are mostly used in uh, rotary cleans in cement plants and for other gas cleaning devices. Lower type separator is also used which are actually for more larger particles for 30 micron and above the particle separation we use lower type separators. Some of the places we have dust traps. These dust traps are separating the particulates from dust laden gas and due to uh, the change in direction by 180 degree. So reversing the flow passage dust traps are separating the dust medium from the uh, gas medium. The cyclones are uh, employing the centrifugal force for separating action and it consists of a vertically placed cylinder where a conical base is there. The particulate laden gas stream when enters tangentially from the top of the uh, cyclone the uh, it is uh, having a swirling motion across the cyclone space and the dust is uh, separated at the bottom and clean gas comes out from the top through a central piping 
so dust collected at the bottom that is uh, going to a storage hopper cyclone separators are mostly employed as a mechanical dust collecting device and uh, they are having a cortel tube inside and the shape is uh, cylindrical and at the bottom there is a conical collecting zone the cyclone diameter is very much important in terms of the collection efficiency and separating arrangement and pressure drop smaller the diameter higher is the efficiency because centrifugal action increases with the decrease in radius of rotation beside that if you see the efficiency of the cyclones if the particle size is less than 5 the collection efficiency around 50 percent and uh, for high efficiency it is uh, 50 to 80 percent less than uh, uh, for particle size 5 to 20 microns, the collection efficiency is generally we find 50 to 80 percent and at higher level when velocity is higher we may get 80 to 90 percent efficiency. For micronized size of the particle uh, 15 to 40 microns the collection efficiency is 80 to 90 percent and for high efficiency unit it can go up to 95 99 percent. Greater than 40 microns are generally uh, all the particles are getting dis, I mean, separated from the gas and it is collected in the mechanical dust collector. The main advantages of cyclones are they are having low initial cost, simple construction and uh, ready to operate, low pressure drop across the system and maintenance is very minimum requirement. There is no moving parts and it can continuously dispose the solid particulates and it can be constructed of any materials like high carbon steel or alloy steel or stainless steel mostly for uh, industrial use we have stainless steel material of cortel tubes and cylindrical zone because of corrosion prevention arrangement the collection efficiency is not very high for particle size lower than 10 microns and uh, it is uh, when heavier particles are concentrations are more then there may be abrasive uh, effect on the inner side of the cylinder and the collection efficiency decreases with the dust concentration within the gas. So naturally uh, we find this uh, uh, cyclones are uh, applied mostly in, in industrial purpose in feedstock, grain processing, food and beverage industries, mineral processing, paper and textile industries and power plants of course. Filters are other type of dust separating system which are employed in different industrial applications. Filtration is one of the most reliable, efficient and economic method by which say, particulate matters are separated from the dust and gas and clean gas is passed through the filters. And there are two types of filters, fabric or cloth filters, fibrous or deep bed filters. But filters are mostly suitable for uh, a dust loading of about 1 gram per cubic meter. At higher loading, it may affect the filter performance. The major or operating problems of the filters are clearing the uh, dust accumulated across the filter boundary, rupture of the cloths or temperature of uh, operation, at high temperature, there may be burnout of the filter material. Bleeding may occur. Bleeding is uh, penetration of the fabric by the fire particles. Humidity can change the performance. There may be chemical attack, possible corrosive chemical presence in the effluent which can damage the filter materials. Fabric and cloth filters requires continuous filter cleaning arrangement and uh, that is employed by either wrapping, shaking, reverse air flow or pulse jet. Mostly in power station, pulse air jet is employed to clean the filters, fabric filters for performance. For filter fabrics, various options are there. Cotton, wool, nylon, uh, decron, uh, acrylic, polypropylene, fiberglass, these materials may be used. The only uh, advantage with the filters, the collection efficiency is very high for uh, 
uh, micronized size below 10 micron diameter of the particulates. It is simple in construction. The power consumption is not high and we can, can dispose the accumulated solids uh, in dry condition. But uh, these filters are basically uh, of high um, efficiency. Their efficiency is comparable with the ESP depending upon the application. Though fabric filters are suitable for industrial application at low temperature uh, dust laden gas, for, for, uh, they are not suitable for high temperature and humid condition dust cleaning devices. Maintenance cost is high and they are large in size. There is problem of handling dust in terms of the corrosivity and which can uh, clog the uh, cloth of the filter. So naturally they are preferred with a controlled arrangement where temperature and corrosive environment is not disturbing for the purpose of cleaning. Application wise we can find it in uh, metallurgical industry, foundries, cement industry, lime plant, brick and ceramic industry, flour mills, everywhere we have the application including in the power stations where we employ it it with uh, in parallel with ESPs. The next type of uh, dust separation and collection system is electrostatic precipitator. ESP can be either single stage or two stage design. In a single stage precipitator gas ionization and particulate collection are combined in a single stage and in case of uh, two stage uh, system we have particulate ionization in the first chamber and collection is done in the second chamber. There are two types of ESPs, pipe type and plate type ESPs, but mostly plate type ESPs are found in the industries. The efficiency of ESP is very high. It can uh, almost approach the 100% efficiency. Most of the installations operate between 99 to 99.9% .9 efficiency. The basic design parameters of ESP in context of flue gas are volumetric flow rate of the flue gas, composition of gas with particulate loading, temperature of the gas, dew point temperature of the gas, gas velocity distribution at the entrance of the ESP, design of the ducting in terms of flow, collection electrode areas and their ionization potential. ESP is a device which captures the dust particles from the flue gas and thereby reduces the stack emission. Precipitators function by the ESP is uh, uh, happening by the electrically, electrostatically charging the dust particles by some uh, inside the gas stream by some emitting electrodes and the charged particles are then attracted to and deposited on the plates or collecting devices which are called collecting electrodes. When enough dust has accumulated the collectors are shaken, wrapped to dislodge the dust causing it to fall and by the force of gravity they are collected in a hopper and from the hopper they are evacuated and uh, pass through a conveyor system to dump it. Flue gas after Coming out of the economizer, pass through air filter and enters the ESP. And from the ESP, uh, the clean flue gas is uh, exiting through the chimney. In ESP, the inlet is uh, provided with a gas distribution device so that velocity of inlet can be distributed uniformly across the ESP. There are Discharge electrode wires, emitting electrode wires and collecting electrode plates. They are uh, placed in parallel in such a way when the gas flows through the system, the uh, particles are getting charged from the emitted electrodes and the charged particles accumulate in the collecting plates. There is DC power supply and wrapping system available. The wrapping system actually dislodges the collected ash to the 
bottom hoppers and from there uh, it is disposed to the conveyor system to the ash handling plant. The outside of the ESP is totally insulated so that temperature can be maintained and there is no uh, accumulation of ash particle and sticking of ash particle within the collecting plates. So this way ESP is utilized for the purpose of collection and separation of dust from the flue gas. ESP removes the particles from exhaust flue gas of boiler combustion product. There are six specific stages uh, that takes place in the ESP for precipitation of dust particles. First one is ionization, charging of particles, then migration of particles, transporting the charged particle to the collecting surfaces. Then collection, precipitation of the charged particles into the collecting surfaces of the collecting plate. Charge dissipation, neutralizing the charged particles on the collecting surfaces. And particle dislodging, removing the particles from the collecting surface uh, to the hopper of the ESP and particle removal. Then uh, conveying the collected dust particle in the hopper to a disposal point. Now let us try to understand how the ash particles move along the uh, gas stream uh, across the ESP and how their uh, direction is changed and they are separated from the flue gas stream. Now when the uh, ash particles are moving along with the flue gas, they are electrically charged and this uh, uh, we have uh, uh, charging is done in such a way they are uh, ash particles are negatively charged and this negatively charged particles starts moving uh, towards the collecting plates which are actually positively charged this way we try to collect the particles though this is a arrangement uh, by which Emitting electrodes are actually uh, discharging high voltage DC negative and collecting electrodes are ground, they are positive. So electrical field is perpendicular to the flue gas flow and uh, emitting electrodes press the negative ions towards the positive uh, uh, plate. And as a result, there is a corona effect. And uh, when the charged ash particles with uh, uh, negatively charged particles, they move towards the positively charged collecting plates. Uh, they uh, come in contact with each other and lose their potential. The positive uh, collecting plates attracts the ash particles and uh, when they get in contact with each other they are electrically neutralized and remain uh, collected in the collecting plate so this way we are uh, getting a layer of ash collected on the collecting plate and it is mechanically wrapped by a wrapping mechanism so that uh, all the collected ash in the collecting plate are getting dislodged and coming to the bottom hoppers of the ESP from where we can pass on to the uh, conveyor system and dispose it to the ash dike. The layout of the collector plates and emitter coils are shown according to the fields in this uh, ESP layout. Flue gas is entering through the gas distribution plate and they are getting stratified across the various fields and the collector plates and emitter electrodes, emitter color coils are placed in this pattern and uh, there is continuous uh, charging of the ash particles, collection of ash particles, neutralization of ash particles and uh, shifting of ash particle at the bottom hoppers 
and disposal of ash particles. So in a nutshell, the working principle of the ESP is first discharging the electrons from the emitting coils, then dust particle charging, then migration of dust particles towards the collecting plate, then collection of dust in the collecting plates, then wrapping and then disposal of the collected ash at the bottom upper. So as uh, basic components of ESP, we have discharge electrodes, for that we have emitting electrodes. Power components, we have collecting electrodes, then precipitator control by high voltage equipments and uh, there are DC supply system. Wrapping system is there and there is a part GR system to clean the hoppers as well as we have heaters so that there is no rat hole formation within the hoppers. Then for flue gas conditioning arrangement, we have ash level indicators, gas distribution screen and segregating gates. All these components are utilized for proper functioning of ESP. To achieve the laminar flow at lower velocity, the gas path is split in several passes. Perforated gas distribution screen is used at the entry of each pass so that we can get uniform velocity distribution across the uh, ESP flue gas flow passages. To achieve better collection efficiency and uh, to arrange the system in order, we have several fields provided in series with the each pass and there are uh, various combinations possible for uh, this distribution of flue gas passage and they, those are utilized according to space provision and arrangement. For large capacity boilers, uh, there are two pass passes uh, in uh, each boiler with six active fields in each pa passage and they are placed in such a way that uh, in each passage we have collecting plates, emitting electrodes, wrapping mechanism, insulators, high voltage rectifier transformers, heaters and ash level indicators as per requirement of the arrangement. The collecting plates are made of carbon steel and each plate is having a width and height almost 13.5 uh, meter by 0.75 meter width. Six such plates are there in a row. There are 51 such row in each field for 210 megawatt units. And uh, if we th uh, look to the emitting electrode coils, uh, they look like helical spring and their uh, helix die is around 30 millimeter and wire die is uh, thickness is, wire thickness is 3 millimeter. Each helix is 4.5 meter long and they are placed in such a way that one column consists of three such helix vertically connected and on each row 16 such columns are there. There are 50 such rows and they are placed in conjunction with the collecting plates 50 rows of emitting electrodes are hung between 51 rows of collecting plates maintaining the electrical clearance required <coughs> for this arrangement. Emitting electrode assembly is supported by four support insulators and uh, there is a wrapping arrangement fitted with hammers which are placed across the collecting plates and they are mounted at different angles to wrap at different times so that uh, wrapping sequence can be maintained by rotating the wrapping hammer uh, connected shaft and uh, these hammers uh, are rotating and hammering wrapping uh, uh, the emitting wrapping is towards the top of the field and uh, in the collecting wrapping is also there as the emitting wrapping touches the light parts, the insulator is introduced into the shaft. This is called shaft insulator. For sequential wrapping arrangement, 
there is a drum with cat cam follower and that is driven by a synchronous motor which gives starting command to the individual rapping motors this is called a synchronous programmer it controls all the rapper motors of one pass each rap is of one minute long and uh, collecting rappers are operated at a sequence of 10 8 6 4 3 2 raps per hour respectively and emitting rappers and gas distribution plate rappers are operated at the frequency of 10 raps per hour because there is a less requirement of emitting rapper uh, um, rapping and uh, GD rapper rapping then uh, we have uh, capacitance type ash level indicators which are provided in each hopper for sensing the hopper ash level and high level trip alarms are there for ash disposal uh, we have below each hopper there is a uh, transmitter and the ash from the hopper is first unloaded into the transmitter and then uh, this is conveyed uh, pneumatically to the silos for further uh, disposal in the ash dikes. The ESP sizing is uh, dependent on Dosh Anderson equation. Dosh Anderson equation uh, implies the collection efficiency that is uh, depicted by 1 minus e to the power minus W SCA where W is the migration velocity and SC is specific collecting area. Migration velocity is the velocity at which the dust particles travel towards the collecting electrodes under the influence of electric field. And specific collecting area is the amount of collecting area required to be provided to collect the dust from the gas flow rate of 1 meter cube per second. Let us see the few de definitions in this context. Flue gas velocity is measured in meter per second. It is actually flue gas flow in meter cube uh, with respect to ESP effective cross section area in meter square. Aspect ratio is another term which is uh, used uh, to uh, demarcate effective length of the ESP in terms of collecting electrode height. There is another term which is called treatment time in second. It is uh, re referenced by effective length of the ESP in meter with respect to flue gas velocity in meter per second. All these three terms are important in uh, sizing and arranging the ESP. So velocity is the quantity of flow uh, over the height of the ESP duct and width of the ESP duct that is the uh, cross sectional area of the ESP duct. Aspect ratio is the um, number of uh, hopper field lengths divided by height of the ESP duct. Treatment time is uh, the total length of the ESP duct divided by velocity of the flue gas across the duct. Let us now try to understand the effect of these various parameters in the performance of the ESP. First we consider the aspect ratio. During the wrapping, the falling of dust particle takes a trajectory form. Lower the aspect ratio, the tra trajectory does travel along with the gas flow without falling into the hoppers. So there is a chance of re-entrainment within the gas flow. Higher the ratio, performance will be better. So we need a higher aspect ratio. Optimum aspect ratio depends on the allowable velocity, required collection efficiency, and available space. If the space is more, naturally the effect is more. Now regarding the treatment time, time available for capturing the dust particle, more the treatment time, as reasonable velocity improves the collection efficiency and capturing of uh, 
Reentrant particles improves with time, so we have to give the treatment time sufficiently. Most of the locations, as we see, there is a sufficient space given and GD plates provide uh, the velocity distributions as such that uh, there is a sufficient time available to treat the collection and migration arrangement and aspect ratio uh, actually favors in terms of uh, this uh, charging uh, efficiency as well as how this is uh, moving towards the collecting plates. So all this together uh, we get that ESP is working in a proper fashion. So long we can have a, a sufficient uh, validation of the design parameters in terms of treatment time, aspect ratio, length and velocity as well as pressure drop across the ESP which can contribute to the proper performance and arresting of the flue gas uh, dust particulate matters according to our maximum requirement. Advantages of ESPs are high collection efficiency, particles in the range of sub-micron size can be removed, even 0.1 micron size particles can be collected, low maintenance and operating cost, low pressure drop, uh, pressure drop uh, 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 with respect to the total length of the uh, ESP and satisfactory handling of large volume of high temperature gas. Treatment time is very less. It can be between the 0.1 to 10 seconds. Cleaning is easy. There is no limit to solid, liquid or corrosive chemical uses. And uh, at the same time, it is a uh, a costly equipment, uh, initial cost is very high, space requirement is quite large and there is chance of explosion in case of collection of gases and particles having incomplete unburned carbon and there may be explosion. Precautions are necessary to maintain safety during the operation. We have uh, almost all the industrial plants handling the flue gas emission are uh, having ESP arrange arrangement, uh, cement factories, pulp and paper mills, steel plants, non-ferrous industries, chemical industries, petroleum, carbon black industries, electric power utilities, all are having uh, utilization of uh, ESPs for purpose of emission control. The other type of gas cleaning device is scrubbers weight collectors. They are actually devices which utilize a liquid to assist in the removal of particulates as well as cleaning the toxic gaseous material from the gas stream. Generally water is used as the uh, scrubbing medium and uh, scrubbers are basically cheap to install but they are expensive to operate depending upon the uh, various chemical requirements. And in case of uh, boilers, we have uh, uh, flue gas desulfurization units which are scrubbing the uh, sulf sulfur dioxide or sulfur trioxide. And we are also having uh, selective catalytic reaction uh, reactors and uh, non-selective catalytic uh, reactors. These are also one kind of scrubbers which are uh, used for desox and denox arrangement for cleaning the flue gas before it is uh, emitted through the, I mean, exhausted through the chimney. Generally, four major types of scrubbers are seen in the industries. Spray tower type, venturi scrubbers, packed scrubbers, and mechanical scrubbers. Now, the choice of uh, scrubbing equipment, uh, it depends upon the, how the particulate matter will be collected from uh, the process and uh, how that has to be implemented. Now so that equipment choice uh, not only um, for scrubbers whether it is ESP or filters or cyclones or settling chambers they are dependent upon uh, certain considerations. Let us see those considerations. 
First consideration is definitely particulate size, shape and density in the dust cloud and gas. Particulate loading often expressed as milligram per cubic meter of the flue gas or gas uh, that is considered efficiency required for collection so that we can control the how much percentage can be allowed. Then properties of gas, their temperature, inlet temperature, allowed outlet temperature, composition, pressure, velocity, density, humidity, combustibility, reactivity, toxicity, and electric and sonic properties. Beside that, uh, we need to know the flow characteristics in terms of flow rate, variation of inflow rate depending upon the say in case of boiler the depending upon the how the combustion is getting controlled what is the uh, product of combustion volume and how much velocity we are getting and flow we are getting then allowable pressure drop across the collection chamber settling chamber contaminate disposal or disposal uh, arrangement in terms of special precautions capital and opening cost of the equipment and ease of maintenance of uh, equipment and their reliability to perform. The economical aspect must be considered before we go for any dust separation and arresting collection device. Before installing different type of collector, the basic aspect which must be considered are installation cost, power consumption and maintenance and operating cost. Economical aspects uh, in terms of cyclones, if we see, generally they are cheap to install as mechanical dust collectors, but uh, th their uh, power consumption is uh, not there and uh, they are having moderate maintenance cost. But the corrosive gas and abrasive dust corrosion effects that can uh, impinge on the life of the uh, system and that can uh, reduce the effectiveness of the use and uh, for filters uh, comparatively expensive to install back filters power consumption is moderate though we need frequent cleaning but uh, most cases the maintenance cost is high because uh, operation service cost is also significantly sometimes goes high for cleaning and uh, pulse jet system arrangement which consumes quite significant amount of compressed air. For ESP, though it is most ex expensive, it has very uh, long life to perform. The performance efficiency is very high. Power consumption is moderate to low. But uh, as well as uh, we have a facility to have less pressure drop across the collection facility maintenance cost is moderate so it is most preferable in case of scrubber inso installation cost is uh, moderate maintenance cost is generally not very high but it is uh, considerable high pressure drop is there across the scrubber and power consumption is significantly high so naturally the economics aspects are also considered before we go for any dust separation, collection and disposal system for any of the uh, system and naturally for boiler also mostly we use ESPs and mechanical dust collectors and sometimes we use fabric filters too. Scrubbers are utilized for arresting toxic gases of SOX NOX so this way in power station we contribute uh, in emission control through these uh, mechanisms. With this we come to the end of the uh, discussion on dust collection and dust separation devices, how they are employed in power station for the purpose of monitoring and maintaining the emission norms. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to Mail me, I will be ready to answer it. Thank you all, all the best.